My name is Stuart Pickering uh, and we're here today to go through turning between centres. We've chosen a small piece of softwood here to turn between centres. This is only building quality softwood, there's nothing expensive about this piece of wood, but it's one of the best timbers to learn to turn on. The reason for that is that you've got to cut it. It doesn't, it doesn't like being scraped, it will turn all the fibres up. We've marked the, uh, we've marked the timbers corner to corner with, uh, with our gauge to make sure that the centre is really in the middle. And we're going to pop this onto the solid part of the machine. You don't want to be doing this into the bearing. You want to do it on the solid part of the machine. We're going to find our centre and give it two or three quite heavy clouts and you can see that's the drive centre marking that we produce there. We're going to place the four prong centre into the spindle and give it a good tap home. Maybe with your mallet just give it a slight tap, not heavy, just to make sure that that Morse taper has seated and it's not going to spin when we start to turn. Taking a piece of timber that we marked here, we're going to reposition it on the drive centre. Now we're going to bring the, the tailstock up to the centre, lock him off, and then this is a revolving centre in this lathe, so we can put it a little bit of pressure and it's not going to burn the wood as a back centre wood. Put that into position and lock it up nice and tight. We're going to bring the tool rest along and for the roughing uh, position, we want to be roughly on centre height. We also want to give a little bit of room on the end of the timber and the reason for that is, which will come in a moment, when we start to cut. Just check our centre and now we've got the wood revolving so we can start cutting. One thing I wanted to explain uh, regarding this type of cut is that if I was to give you this piece of wood and a hand planer, you'd want to cut it this way. This is the way that wood enjoys being cut. Now what we're doing with a wood turning lathe is complete opposite. We're forcing this. So we're, we're, we're forcing it against the grain. So when we come to our finishing cuts, we want to be as close as we can cut into the grain. So we're going to take our roughing gouge and bevel on the timber and we're going to take the corners away. Now at this point, the tool is intermittently cutting. So we've got to be careful until we reach the timber being cylindrical. And as we get more cylindrical in shape, the cut becomes easier. Okay, so now we're there, we can start to move along here. Again, removing Now we want to clean up the corners here if we're going to do a little stool leg and we do that with the use of the skew chisel. We want to be able to cut across the grain now. So what we've done now is that we've got rid of the corners and we've left our square section here ready if we're going to do a joint into there for a stool. Right, we're going to now concentrate on getting our finishes onto this timber and we're going to start off using a skew chisel. The skew chisel is, is the tool that's going to give you the best finishes in this instance and this tool cuts either way. It's got a bevel on each side. It's only one of the turning tools that has a bevel on both sides as a cutting tool. So we want the tool on the rest. It's called a skew chisel because the angle is at a skew, which enables us to cut with the grain. And now you can see the tools on the rest. We want the cut to be as near as we can in the centre of that tool. So I'll do that very slowly and you can see the centre of the tool beginning to cut. Now, this is going to be a tapered section. So now you can see that we're planing it off. We've got something here that resembles a shaving and underneath there it will be nice and clean look. A little bit more to move off that. So we're going to go again using the skew, we're going to cut across the grain. I'm not pushing the tool, if you watch my right hand, this is coming up and we're going to give ourselves clearance there look. We're not pushing the tool, we're lifting it. So we drop the skew chisel up, you can see my right hand come all the way up and that's cutting across the grain. And you'll see in a second that we're going to get a nice finish. 
I'm just going to move the tool rest so I can get my finger underneath there so that I can support the tool here. So my finger underneath, my thumb over the top and we can begin to roll that tool in, look. And we can roll it all the way around. Again, just one very light cut to get that good finish. And there you are, you've got a super cut across the, across the end grain. Moving the tool rest on. We're going to do a tapered section. Now, although it's a finishing tool, it will remove quite a lot of timber. Down to our finishing cut. Okay, now we're going to cut a bead. Still the skew chisel. And we're going to just again roll that tool in and roll that tool in. And just to finish the bead off this way, roll that tool in and roll that one in. So that's a skew chisel. Next thing we're going to use is a spindle gouge. Very often called a fingernail gouge because it's the same shape as your fingernail. And this tool is produced for a number of things, but its main use is to produce a cove, which is the opposite to your bead. We're going to take the tool. Again, we're, we're, we've got the bevel, so we're going to go in to the bottom and back out. We can't turn uphill, so we have to go down then from my left-hand side into the base to produce this and if we get to the two cuts together just lift the tool so we're slightly burnishing the timber then finally back to our skew chisel to finish off our leg and if we're using the tool correctly even across the corners there's no danger But I would suggest you practice a little bit before you do that particular operation. Now we've finished that, we can take our shavings and we can polish up. And there's our finish from our tool, tool leg. Nicely polished, no sanding, straight from the tool.